Hi, you are listening to Hiring for Executives webinar series part 2 on a topic of how to interview senior executives. Interviewing is the fourth step of the hiring process. It is crucial that before everything else you have done a good role definition, which is the starting point of the hiring process. After interviewing, there are three more things to do. Reference checks, making the hiring decision, and finally, successfully onboarding the new hire. Our main speaker today is Denis Ara. He has been headhunter for more than 30 years. Denis has established several companies in the professional services sector. Five years ago, he co-founded people analytics company Visneo, the SaaS platform that helps managers of all levels to make better hiring decisions. Now, before Denis starts sharing his experience, we would like to play you one video. Take it as a warm-up exercise to bring your mind to the interviewing process. While listening to the video, start writing down what do you think about this situation you see on the video. What the interviewer is doing right or wrong. You can pause this video at home to look for a paper and pen to take notes. You can later compare your thoughts to the webinar attendees' comments. Good morning. Good morning. Have a seat. Thank you. <sighs> And thank you for coming to meet us today. Thank you. OK. Um, do you want me to tell you a few words about our company first? Yes, please. OK. <clears throat> OK. Um, yeah. This is our company. Do you have any questions? Yes, you mentioned uh, two markets you're, you're going to enter next year. If you can expand a little bit more in detail on that. OK, uh, good questions. Very good questions. OK, I'll ask you. Um, let's now talk about you. Um, Please tell me about your career and achievements until now. Yes, uh, from where should I start? As you prefer. OK. My name is uh, uh, Michael Gambardi. So I'm a graduate from the Harvard Business School. Uh, so I had a lot of offers after uh, I graduated. Uh, but I de decided to decline all of them. So I started to go for entrepreneurship first. So it gave me a good opportunity to understand how to run a business, how to get an entrepreneurship, but also importantly, to how to get an understanding how we run uh, it from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I joined the company uh, headquartered in Zurich, uh, a core group, so an insurance company, uh, very uh, cross global uh, penetration, so in terms of 30 different countries, about 4,400 employees, 9.9 .9 billion uh, revenue, so again, Fortune 500 company. Uh, so I was uh, the uh, department head before I actually got promoted in a, as a regional head. So, uh, so I moved back to uh, closer to the headquarter in London. And then later on, I got headhunted as a, as a CEO so in Germany, so in Munich. So that the company at that time was in a very poor, poor shape. So I had to, lot, uh, to let go a lot of people. Uh, was very difficult to get around the financial uh, return. Uh, kind of a tough decisions uh, to make, uh, so it was very challenging. Tough experience for a tough guy. Tell me about yourself then. Ah, well, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I love tennis, uh, classical music, reading, but uh, passion is uh, sailing. Really? Yes. Do you have a boat? Yes, I have a boat, a Benetton uh, was running 30. You want to see? Yeah, of yes. course. Yeah. yeah, look, look at that. Oh, what a beauty! Yes, I actually was just clo uh, crossing over the Atlantic. Uh, really? It was very challenging, but a very nice experience, very nice experience. Oh. Okay, how was the weather? Oh, it was, uh, you can imagine, it was very bumpy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. ship is good. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, it's equipped for that, mm -hmm. so, yes. Okay, um, I have one more question for you. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, um, please, think and answer. How many tennis balls would fit into a Boeing 747? Ah, uh, 
uh, that's the classical Google question. Ah, yeah, you know uh, that one. Yeah. yeah and you oh, okay, okay. Ones. Then yeah, let yeah, me give yeah. you another one. Um, just please, just listen and and answer. One and a half hens lays one and a half eggs in one and a half days. How many eggs will two hens lay within three days? I think it's four, if I'm not mistaken. Someone mentioned in the chat that, well, this, uh, this tennis ball question is, is something everybody asks. I was hoping that this is over now, but um, but obviously maybe not. Let's see what people um, thought about this interview. So James is saying the interviewer is leading the witness and wasting a lot of time. Mm. That's that's pretty obvious. That's pretty obvious. That, mm -hmm. uh, starting with a lengthy company presentation is a typical way how how this is done. I have mm -hmm. seen it so many times. I, I'm myself. As a headhunter, I sometimes participate at these final interviews, and uh, this is a typical thing. What is done, like it, like they would assume that they don't know where they are applying now, because they they have been up to the last stage, last you're, you're meeting finalists, and uh, the managers make the face like 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 the candidates wouldn't know what what the company is about and what business it is, and so that's, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. a terrible waste of time. Yeah, multiple people mentioned in the comments that um, you shouldn't spend so much time like trying to oversell the company. James is uh, saying it's unstructured, no framing of the conversation, no control over expectations. Yeah, I would like to ask, do you think it's typical? Is it extraordinary? To my understanding, this is very typical. This is how it's done usually. Like uh, managers uh, have no plan and they just sit down and start chat and that, mm -hmm. that's it. Multiple people also mentioned that uh, there is no structure. Katrini is also saying that interviewer is impatient and not focusing on the candidate. So it yes. always kind of goes back to that we are not focusing on the candidate but trying to again oversell uh, the company. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting uh, point from James that I haven't heard before that having a laptop open in front of the Front of him is both distracting, slightly rude, and unbalanced. What do you think about that one? Yeah, actually, it's it depends how you do this. Uh, I I sometimes open my laptop, then I I say for sure that well, I open it just because I I have my C, your CV here, and I want to make my uh, interview notes immediately in the computer, not just write them on my notepad and and, and need to copy them later on in. Uh, but here it's obvious, quite obvious, that uh, that Jack is like scrolling his emails there. He's, he's not uh, he's not uh, using it mm -hmm. for interview purposes actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then there are multiple comments basically about not being greatly prepared, not uh, gathering uh, real information. I, I, I hope you agree with me that this is more or less like a typical uh, interview situation. Where no new information is actually gathered. They talk about the company, the information what should be well known already for the candidate. And then they talk about the candidate's career story, which again should be well known to the executive from the CV. So basically, only new information, what is exchanged here is about the hobbies, about the boat, and this is absolutely irrelevant uh, from the standpoint of the decision they have to make. So what is wrong with interviews? <clears throat> to my mind, most it's wrong. Like it's, it's just part of the hiring ritual and no one really thinks, of course, we have to have an, an interview, but no one really thinks uh, how many we need and what do you need them for? And that's uh, how it happens that, that uh, busy people like this Jack, the manager in this video, 
jumps in without any preparation and uh, starts just talking about his company and then says, okay, now tell me something about yourself. And the, the only new information was the boat, which was irrelevant, which was kind of noise actually um, uh, from the standpoint of this decision, what, what they have to make. Um, interviews might be good. So this half of the people who said that the interviews are good, but they are good only on certain conditions. They're useful if prepared and executed well. And I will tell you in, in a few minutes, what does it mean? What does it mean to prepare well and to execute well an interview? Yeah. Uh, but if not, which is maybe in half of the cases or more, uh, the case they may, may be dysfunction. And, and what I mean is that you get actually a lot of unnecessary information when you meet a new person. You know, your handshake, the smell, uh, the, the appearance, uh, who, who, whoever the person looks similar to you, uh, whatever associations with the person uh, come to your mind, all this is uh, practically uh, not useful or dis dysfunctional information for, for the hiring decision. So in this sense, if you're not well prepared uh, for the interview, you better don't do it. But of course, everybody does it, then pl please better use the time in a proper way. It's actually not a rocket science. There is three simple rules. First, analyze the position. Second, inform the candidate. And third, inform yourself. Analyze the position means that this Jack, we didn't learn anything. Maybe he knew, but uh, most probably not. He hasn't, hadn't uh, thought over what kind of person he needs or what this person he needs to accomplish what you select. So analyzing the position means that you have to have a clear understanding what this person needs to achieve what are the requirements to do this and what are the competencies to do this in best possible way. Then inform the candidate. You should use part of this uh, information what you have from position analysis to inform the candidate. And of course, inviting the candidate to the interview without informing him uh, about everything, about your business is, uh, quite strange. You should uh, share all possible information at this stage, which is not highly confidential, which you can't share. And of course, you should in inform yourself. You mean, if you, if you invite candidate in and you haven't read the CV, which is very often the case, unfortunately, uh, uh, this is, this is uh, oh, you, are, you are just unprepared. You should read everything what you have about the candidate and and uh, compare it with the position map or position uh, analysis, what you have, and think what you can decide based on the information you have already, or what you need to uh, add from the interview. What do you need to ask to clarify? For example, they might, uh, might have written in their uh, CV that they are uh, professionals in, in project management. But, and you have a project management um, capacity is, is a requirement in your, uh, in your job profile. But what does it mean? It might, might mean hundreds of different things. So you better find out what kind of projects, how big, with how many people, for how long uh, this person has managed. So this is the thing. You, you, you see project management mentioned in the, in the CV, but you want to know what it actually means. But how many interviews you need uh, overall? How many times you need to meet a candidate before you make the hiring decision? So my understanding is that three is enough. Uh, there is a quite common understanding. If you Google this this question, you read about uh, you read about the Google uh, the company who who was one of those who who thought that more interviews is better. And they analyzed their results and they decided that no more than four is, is necessary. And if, if I think about it, I think actually, I can't think of, of anything what you can 
what you should ask on fourth interview, what you couldn't ask on the third. And what I what I think what what people mean when they when they talk about four interviews, they think of four people evaluating the final candidates. And I agree with this that uh, if you have four people evaluating the final candidates, it's better than three. But you don't need four interviews for this. And uh, for example, yes, screening interview is the one where you find out whether this candidate is available and has this uh, qualities what you are looking for. The main interview is then where you should actually find out everything what you need to evaluate the candidates and compare them and make your decision. And then finally, you might need a business interview with, to, to discuss your actual challenges. You might give them some additional information about your status of the, the, of the of the area they are going to to manage and so and discuss how they would uh, handle the challenges and then if you if you want to four people involved you can invite there is always one person who makes the decision it's, it can't be a collective decision it's the hiring manager the one person who selects the sub subordinate to himself uh, and he, if he wants input for from four people for example or five he can invite two or three of them to join the main interview and just sit in there and, and listen and, and add their evaluations to the, uh, according to a agreed criteria and two others to the business interview. And then you have like four or five people's input, but uh, there is no reason to waste the candidate's time and uh, let the other managers ask the same kind of questions or Tell me about what you have been doing. This is just just stupid. Mm -hmm. We have um, two thoughts, uh, if I might read them out. So yes. James mentioned that passive candidates often need more in his experience, uh, very different to active, like more interviews, as I'm understanding. What do you think about this? Well, what I am talking about is, is well, I am working only with passive candidates, actually, uh, meaning like... Uh, uh, this is the majority of the, of the, the, they are not candidates before I call them and, and, uh, and ask them whether they would consider moving and then they would say that, well, well if it's, if it's very, very interesting thing, maybe, and then I would ask what is the interesting thing they would consider. And if they describe something similar, what I have in mind, then I, 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 I talk, I tell them at all what I, why I call them. If not, then uh, then I might say that. Well, I understand now. I will I will call you next time when I have something suitable for you. But uh, this is this is what I call screening interview. It's like a 10, 15 minute talk, and after that, if they say that, well, this is something I would think about, I will send them some briefing pack about the company, about the business, about the position, and when after that they say. That uh, yes, I want to I want to talk about this. I would consider it seriously. Then I will make the main interview. And then, if if I decide afterwards that this is a good candidate for the for the shortlist, then I will hand it over to client. And then the client does this these two interviews: the main interview and the business interview. That's what I mean. And to my mm -hmm. to my understanding and my practice, it's totally sufficient and mm -hmm. uh, the, the the clients who make more than than these two interviews i i can't stop them somehow but uh, i'm i'm actually feeling that they waste my they waste the valuable time of the candidates okay now let's let's talk about the main interview here the main interview then after you have decided the candidate has decided he has got the information and you 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 come come together for uh, for an hour or or ninety minutes, and you have a panel or or you are on your own. Usually there is a panel. Actually, I would say. So first you introduce and explain the purpose and plan. So how long and what we want to achieve, and second you then ask ask if they have questions about the role and business. You don't do the presentation, but you just ask. You you are you you got the information about our company about the position. Do you have any questions? 
and of course you have to answer if if, if there are there are questions uh, then you ask the questions you need for evaluation this is the key part actually why why you need the interview you ask the questions you have prepared not just random you don't ask them to to um, about their hobbies so you ask only the questions you need for evaluation you don't ask them to uh, tell the story of their career because you have read the CV anyway, you might want to ask for some clarifications or some details. And finally, you ask if they want to add something else. There might be not something important, but perhaps they have prepared a nice pitch about themselves that I'm a great team player or something and they want to perform it. And finally, you have handled the practical things, which are the things if you haven't asked about the salary level they are, they are used to uh, or notice period or whatever. And of course, you have to say what are the things will follow on now? When uh, should they expect to hear from you? Uh, what are the next steps in the decision making process and so on? So that's it. So, but the core core thing is the the questions you need for evaluation. And let's uh, a little bit elaborate about this. Uh, the good question, actually, the one good question is this. This is again suggested by Low Adler, with whom I like pretty much. Um, if you ask the person like this, so now you know about your the, the role we are talking about. What would be your main challenge in this role? And can you find something in your career what is closest to this, what you have done earlier? And then you dig into this maybe 10, 15 minutes in detail. You, you understand what this person did. And that's basically, if you, if you, would, if you would need to choose only one question, this one question will, will do the work. And uh, I, I will uh, give you some other sample questions here, just for thinking. Uh, this is a bad thing to ask. What is your approach to problem solving? So what do you think of this or that? This, this is irrelevant. Have you read something about problem solving or what? This is, what does it tell you? Not much. You should better ask like this, describe a situation where you had to solve a complex problem. This is so much better. And uh, again, when the person, the candidate start, starts answering in general terms, you should guide them to, uh, to really talking about concrete examples. And another one, what is, about your, what is, what is your opinion about performance management? I have heard this myself uh, on, on a final interview where actually, uh, the idea was that uh, the executive should find out how good the person is in um, in accountability or ensuring accountability competency. But he, he asked something which was not informative at all. So what are the better ways to, to, to ask this? Look at this. Can you remember a situation where you had to handle an underperforming subordinate? You ask about the concrete question. And you understand whether this person has the idea how to do it or not. And then clarify. Please describe your action and describe the outcome. Is interviewing senior leaders actually different from interviewing other people? If you are interviewing a mid-manager or, or CEO candidate. We have first person. John is saying, I think it doesn't make sense to ask a senior person to talk about their career like a CV interview so this is how it's like different mm -hmm. thank you John I agree with your comment it does not make sense at all to ask candidate to tell their career story but this is no different with any of the candidates so you should just read the CV and ask to clarify some details if necessary um, in this sense interviewing the senior leaders no difference. Uh, James is saying the content will be different. Um, for example, CEO will uh, be much more org design and strategy, but it's the, still the same structure. Therefore, very similar if you are prepared. And 
Reimo is saying that I believe uh, process is the same as we're still trying to assess if the person has necessary capabilities. Yeah. Arguing otherwise would mean that all positions have different process. Yes, okay. So basically, I think we agree here, and we, we don't need to elaborate much more. I, I wrote the summary before this, before getting your input, but um, everything is the same. But one thing is seems to be different for me: the senior, the more senior persons, the less time they have. So take care not wasting it. But uh, it's a paradox here because, um, uh, to my kind of observations. The, the more higher level the position or the, the decision, the more time is, is actually spent for interviews and the more the time of the candidates is usually wasted. Let's a little bit like bring some examples of the questions that you could like formulate because we mentioned that you should ask about the requirements and the competencies um, and so on. So let's just a little bit cover like uh, what type of questions, like how should you like compile the questions basically. And um, before we start, I want to show you two things just bigger because otherwise you don't understand um, the interview guide that I'm showing to you. Uh, first, Denise, do you want to make a couple of comments of Visneo? Yes, what, Visneo what, what, you, what you see here is the hiring process uh, on Visneo platform. You can all try it out if you go to wisnio.com and register. You can you can you can try it and see it there. But that is the, the steps of the hiring process, starting from position mapping, then it's shortlisting where you can invite candidates and present them, then it's interview and evaluate, which we look deeper into right now. And then you can compare the candidates. You can compare all the candidates you evaluated, and then when you select one, there is also an onboarding function. So mm -hmm. according to our understanding, the, the end point of the hiring process is not when you have signed the contract with the candidate, but when the candidate is onboarded. So he, is, he or she is part of the team and works kind of in full capacity. Okay, thank you. Um, I will show you two things uh, to explain where the information that we are now seeing uh, comes from. So the last webinar, again, the video was in the link. Uh, in the chat and you can also write, uh, write, find it in our YouTube. But last time we did this together, we made a head of marketing uh, uh, position mapping. So we have description, we have uh, the key objectives, and we also have key requirements that we discussed through last time. So this is will be the input basically for the Q, uh, interview guide that we are re reviewing now. Other thing, try to cover it very quickly is the candidate profile because you're going to see a couple of like evaluations and summaries of um, competencies, personality and values just to explain that it comes from the tests that the candidate did and that's why we are seeing this information on um, the interview guide. Do you want to say a couple of words why competencies, personality and values? Yes, if we, if we think of, uh, of the hiring success then we want people who are similar uh, in values to those people they are going to work with. They all go into work in a team and we want them, want them to be similar in values. And then, because this gives them trust, engagement, they like to be with those people and, uh, and they stay longer with, the, with, with an employer if, they, if their immediate team is similar in values for them. And then you need diversity in everything else, like in personality traits, in competencies, which gives them uh, gives the team like agility and uh, potentially be, makes it high performing. So these are the values, and we want the, the candidates' values to be similar to the team team members' values. Okay, now I'm going to move it here. So. Go to the guide so we can a little bit discuss the questions, even if you don't ac have access to this, I think uh, just discussing it through how to ask what to ask helps. So as you can see, uh, the first one um, are the requirements. So I have a question. So let's say you have defined that you need to ask about uh, the requirements. What is the best uh, way, like how to compile a question? How uh, how to get the information if the person asks this kind of uh, ability 
uh, or experience that he or she is saying that they have. Mm -hmm. So like, like we see that the requirement here is a proven ability uh, to drive customer acquisition. And, uh, and uh, the way to ask it is like I described in my, in my lecture part just recently, like give me an example how you did this or that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very concrete and no Focus. hypothetical situation. Focus on a mm -hmm. con concrete question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what to do when you ask the question, but the answer is very like vague? What should you do then? You 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 try to narrow it down for one one concrete example. That's it. If the, the mm -hmm. candidate starts to speaking generally, you say, like, just take one example and talk about this. When was the last mm -hmm. time you did, or when was the, the best thing you achieved? Talk about this, this example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So answers like uh, just explaining what they think, how something has to be done are not good. And you want very oh, like yeah. concrete, yeah. I did this yeah. and et cetera. They might, they might have read it from a textbook, but uh, you don't want to check whether they can read, but you want to know what they have done. So what is the best way to evaluate if the candidate has competences? Can I ask, like, what are your top competences during the interview? Yeah, or this is, is the this question, a bad question? This is the question you can translate uh, into, uh, please lie to me. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you know what competences you need, then you ask questions like this. For example, this accountability is a competence here. It's described in, by one sentence. And there are two questions prompted. This is this is the interview guide, which is uh, generated automatically based on the position map, what the, what the hiring managers made. And now you have prompted two questions. And what, what we recommend you do is you just pick one of these and you ask the same question using more or less the same words. And you ask the same question from different final candidates. And then you, you rate uh, how, who is better or not. And actually, if you listen, uh, listen what they are telling you, you understand very well who is better. If you, if you scroll to the right hand a little bit, you have behavioral examples here. And these are the things which you listen in the, in the answer of the candidate. The more of this is there in the answer, the more the, 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 the better the candidates level of this uh, competency is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a summary, first define the competencies, think through how you could ask about these competencies and uh, choose one question. Don't ask like different questions uh, from different candidates, but ask the same questions so you could like uh, basically compare the results. Um, yes. Try the diversity. So this is now the personality. I have one question because as you can see, we can see here that, um, for example, if the person is more reserved or outgoing, when it comes to uh, personality and let's say people have access to personality tests, should you use it to evaluate if the candidate is fit to the position? What I mean uh, is, for example, let's say we're looking for a salesperson. Is it true that uh, uh, if the person is more outgoing or more uh, extroverted, then they are a better salesperson? No, this is not true, <laughs> but this is a very typical, um, typical stereotypical thinking. So that this person is low in extraversion, he's, he's more more or less reserved. So he's probably not not good for uh, for the sales job. This is not true. There is no proof that extrovert people are better salespeople. And uh, um, the only right way to how personality traits can be used in hiring situation is that you want that your team will be stronger with each person you, you add to the team. So you better add someone who is not similar to anyone, everyone else who, who are there already, but who brings some diversity in this and diversity in the deep level sense in, in behavioral traits, not, not just, just sex or, or color. Mm. Uh, and, and yes, uh, bearing in mind uh, um, personality traits you can you can actually use it in a wrong way i i had once a case where a candidate was refused based on 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 her very high so social uh, traits so he was very social person and and just someone of the decision makers reminded that well 
oh, we had this kind of person and he was not, uh, he was very social and he was not too demanding, was not too demanding enough to other people. And so they they refused uh, her based on this, which is uh, absurd, of course, but um, but this this happens sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you remind? But like, what is the use case of the personality insights then? Like for what the personality the insights can be used only to think of what what kind of person would make this team stronger, and that means that if if you bring different people, for example, this this person here on this scale is is very much different from everybody else in this team so bringing in this kind of person into this team makes the team stronger that's that's it okay thank you and the last part then the values do you want to say a couple of last words uh, like why um should you think about the values alignment why it's important it's it's like a very simple reason. If the person leaves early, if he doesn't stay with your, your company more than a year or, or 18 months, the main reason is that uh, the person wasn't good fit with the, with the other people he worked in, in the small team. And, and the, the usual thing is that the values were not aligned well. If values are, values are aligned well, then people like to be there and they stay up to four times longer with this, with this employer. Gut feeling is the final thing here. We, we have the gut mm -hmm. feeling as the, as the last one. And gut feeling, if you, if you rate your gut feeling, if you just close your eyes and you think of this person in this role, and then you put uh, a rating from one to five, uh, indicating how, how you feel, how good this person might be. After, you're done, after you have done all these ratings, according to all the criteria you have yourself specified for this, for this position, then the gut feeling decision is more or less as good as, as all the, the summary of all the, all the other ratings you have put there. But if you do it before without this, then it's, it's actually misleading. It might be based on, on something that, for example, uh, I, I met Mirel and it reminds me of uh, someone I knew 30 years ago. And, and it's just I can't avoid thinking that, well, as, as she reminds me of this person, she is somehow similar to this person. And, and it might work both ways. Either I like this person very much or I disliked it and, and people kind of refuse or decline good candidates based on this, based on their gut feeling. And I just feel there is something wrong and they even can't say what is, what is the thing, what is wrong. You can comment below what has been your worst interview question or a situation and what are your favorite and most insightful questions to use during an interview. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, you can contact us at support at